guys, so today we're actually going to do a little mini project because my pins came, not my pins, but my sewing clips came in this really cute little tin. And I do think it's really cute. It's like got Peter Rabbit on it and more little Peter Rabbit, Peter Rabbit, all that. But it's really not my style. We're going to try and repaint it. So, woo. Stay tuned. <laughs> So starting off with taking all of the pins out of, not pins, again, sewing clips out of the tin. I just put them in a mason jar that I usually use for paint and water but was empty right now. I get my paint brushes, my paint, and this is where I kind of mess up. I definitely should have sanded this first and probably even used a spray paint that adheres to metal and then painted over with the paints, which, yeah. I'm definitely going to go ahead and fix this, but I figured I should show you guys the mistake because, woo, I was not happy when I realized it was just chipping off. Uh, sad face. But yeah. I tried to paint it all. I ended up just washing it all off with soap and water and sanding it in the next clip. Woo. So this is where I washed off and started to sand. I think I started out with a fine grit, like a 500. I should have started out with something lower grit first, but I do end up switching to it and I forget to record that. But I started out with a lower grit sandpaper and then I switched to the 500 again and I just sanded, 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 sanded. And then after you're done sanding, I recommend washing it in some warm water with some soap and letting it dry overnight just to get all the particulates off of your piece. And then to the painting. I used some Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Prime in this like light purple shade because it's what I had. I figured I can just paint over it with the blue acrylic that I was going to use anyways. And then, woo. Yeah, so I just do I did this first initial layer and then I let it dry and then I ended up doing two more layers just to coat it and also because of how I had to move the little handle piece around, but yeah. Had a bit of a difficult time keeping myself in frame, sorry about that. <laughs> Once the spray painting was done, I brought it in and started painting with the Apple Barrel Admiral Blue. And it was going on so much smoother, so much easier. I wasn't having that paint a little and then your paintbrush drags back the color. It was, it was a very good decision to just wash off the paint, the sand, and then paint with the spray paint and put this over. It was much better. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm a little tired. But yeah, so I just go at it with that apple barrel paint. I get all the little angles, nooks and crannies. And then I probably should have used a palette or something to get my paint out of because I ended up with a couple... This is kind of old apple barrel paint. It uh, kind of has that thing that apple barrel paint does where it gets like ooey gooey and then you end up with like kind of like stringy paint. It's not fun. I think you're about to see it right. No. No, no, no. I don't know. I know you'll see it at some point. But yeah. This one side did not want to hold the paint as well. This is me moving the handle just every which way. And here you will see where I like I'm kind of going at that line there, and later on, later on I'll realize that that's not going to actually work. But past me didn't know that at the time. Yeah. There's just lots of painting. Yeah, that side there is not wanting to hold the acrylic at all. Fun times. Fun times. 
The handle was so difficult. Not like the outside bit of the handle, but definitely like the inside bit of the handle. It was a pain. Time to let it dry. Go in with a second coat on the lid. I think the lid really only ended up needing two coats. I could be wrong. We'll see later in the video. I'm pretty sure the two coats are just like pretty much enough to like coat it like fully saturated in the paint be the color that I wanted. Took a couple more paint jobs for specifically that one side bit where you can see where it was like peeling up the paint a little and I don't know why. I don't know if I just did too smooth of a spray paint layer or what. This is me. Just painting, painting, just keep painting. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get in everywhere that I think I would see the paint and it would bug me. Now, admittedly, I don't do, um, I didn't paint the inside of the lid or the inside of the tin and I just didn't feel the point. I was just like, that's where the clips are going to be. It's just going to scrape off paint no matter what I do. So I just left it alone. Now, going in, getting the handle, and then I actually end up here in a moment just setting it aside to dry while I work on a sketch of the design that I want. Woo! <laughs> Time for the sketching. So I really wanted to take the time while the paint was drying to try and figure out exactly what design I wanted on the cover of my lid. And I know I wanted it to be a dinosaur to match the fabric of all of my other sewing accessories. And I just had to decide if I wanted it to be a Brachiosaurus or a Stegosaurus. And I knew I wanted the heart because it matched the fabric. Um, I didn't do it quite in the style of fabric because I wanted it to be more cutesy. But yeah, so here are the sketchies. And back to the painting. This is where I really just look at all the stuff, see where might need extra coats, which is specifically that one end that just was not holding on supremely well. And I just coat it on there. And then I start to do the edges of the handle. I wasn't sure if I was going to do the inside of the handle and then I ended up deciding I was just because I knew it was gonna bug me. So I had to do some fun and interesting angles with this that made it kind of hard for you guys to see. Sorry. Yeah, it was just a lot of... I ended up switching to a smaller brush and just like going in and it was... I only ended up doing one layer on the inside because I just could not be yeah, it was just, it was too much effort, guys. It was, it was a lot of work. I ended up just, like, layer upon layer upon layer would it be have just been a pain. I just took my small brush, did it a bunch of different angles so I could make sure I coated everything, and I just brushed away. I don't know that I got quite, like, near the bottom, but you can't really see those anyway, so I was like, whatever. <laughs> I, I just, I was like, it's too much, too much work. And yeah, that would be all for the moment on painting. Now, the tin cover, I did end up deciding to go with the Brachiosaurus, because I just thought it looked really cute. And I wanted to kind of color match to the color of the Brachiosauruses on the fabric. And I decided I was going to use Posca's for this just because it was going to be a lot easier than a paintbrush. And then I was going to go right in and I was like, no, I fear. So I went and I got a white Prismacolor color ice and I just sketched it in on the lid. And it was just, it was super cute. Okay, guys, it was, it was, I liked it. So I went with the blue heart on the tin and then for the brachiosaur i went with the pale purple from the P pastel posca pack and it did seem to not like this tin it kind of did like dots so i have to go in at the end and like take some of the blue paint kind of 
clean it up. But yeah, it was fun. I do wish I had a thicker Posca pen than the extra fine that I was using here. It would have been nice if I just had the fine or the regular size, but oh well. It's just a lot of coloring in. I don't color in the back legs yet because I was just like, oh, I'm going to save those for last to make sure that I color things in correctly. And then I'm just, you know, coloring in. Lots of little scribbly marks. Filling in areas. Filling in space. I do end up, I think, coloring over the little blush area I had marked. Because I decided that I was just going to paint that in at the end. Along with the eyes and the mouth. And I'm just going over with like a second coat to kind of fill in any bits and pieces of gap that you can see in the tin cover. And then I go in and I do the other back feet. And then just a little, the blushies. And then what I ended up doing for the, um, the eye and like the mouth and covering up the background is just a really tiny brush. And I just cover up all the places where the paint kind of, um, spread. And I cover up any white lines from the sketch. And then I start lining with the same blue paint that I used for the overall tin. Because I noticed that on the... I'm a little out of view. But I noticed that on the fabric that they didn't use dark lines. They used the same color as the main fabric background, so I just wanted to do all of that. And I do end up thinking that it looks a little plain, so I kind of played around with adding some dots. And this is kind of where I realize that I accidentally made Barney. <laughs> it is done. I've got the heart on the side. I've clear coated everything. Um, here's what the lid looks like. I've put my pins in and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.